Welcome back. We are having our second um, conversation with the Seventh Ward Commissioner, Sean Farhi. I'm Jane Galley, and we're going to have a nice conversation about what's going on in Radnor and what's going on in the Seventh Ward. Hi, Sean. Hey, Jane. Thanks. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me again. Thank Appreciate you very much. It. Thank you very much. I'm glad you could make it today. Um, we're going to go over some topics that are um, important to Radnor as well as to our Seventh Ward, and I know you're up on all those happy topics. So um, I think I'll start with things in Radnor first. Let's do the big stuff, and then we'll go to the smaller our our small area. Sure. And um, there's a the big topic at the moment is the uh, sewer problems that we are having. We do have an older sewer system that needs either repairing or selling. Would you like to sure. let everybody know about that? Sure. So that's kind of um, the big, uh, the elephant or the gorilla in the room. Uh, we have a very old sewer system. Parts of it are 100 years old or, or more. And the price to get it fixed is astronomical, 10, 15 million on up. And that's probably only for part, not all of it. So we have three options. The first option is to do nothing. And I don't necessarily know that that's the best thing to do. The second option may be to look to sell it because it is an asset, it is a revenue asset because every year we pay a sewer tax for our wastewater. And the other option would be to repair it. So I would be for repairing it as opposed to um, selling it. Now if we do sell it, we would get a windfall uh, of cash from whoever that entity is, which is typically a private corporation. Now the private corporations, what they will do they would raise our sewer fees to kind of offset the initial out, outlay of money to buy the asset. And then they would most likely raise, uh, or, you know, or raise rates for the ongoing maintenance. Now, the fact is, is rates are probably going to rise. Um, they rose a little bit last year, and they're going to have to raise this year because every year there's a shortfall from the sewer fee to, uh, and we have to pull money out of the general the general fund to pay for it. So that said, rates are most likely going to rise. But the, the issue that I see is control. And I personally would think that if rates are going to rise, the control should stay in Radnor. And we should not be subject to a public utility corporation, or pardon me, public utility commission, or a public corporation whose main goal is to drive shareholder value and one of the ways that they drive shareholder value is by raising rates. Okay, good. That's not, I'm sure everyone has an opinion. And sure. I, I like that. Yes. Opinion. That's the same opinion I have. Anyway, um, we also have uh, the stormwater, of course, which is a big issue in Radnor. We have problems with water rising, especially with the last huge storm we had. Mm -hmm. um, we had rivers running through everywhere. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, How's, how's that work with the fee and for the seventh ward, et cetera, that we all pay? Sure. So the seventh ward uh, where we live, not to say that we don't have stormwater issues, we do, but we have not had the terrible flooding that we saw in Wayne last August. Now, every year we pay, like the sewer, we pay a stormwater fee. And we've amassed a large amount of money, millions of dollars in this stormwater uh, bucket, we'll say, or, or this. Uh, and now, we, now uh, we're coming to a point where we need to spend this. It just keeps amassing and amassing, and we haven't spent it on projects um, that it was probably uh, meant to go to. We, now, uh, my colleague Jack Larkin has um, looked at certain projects. Uh, they were voted on within um, the Board of Commissioners. We voted for it, and he's, I believe, in the process of trying to get grants. Now, part of the stormwater fee they want to uh, use, because we haven't used, is to pay, um, and pay for, for items for our first responders. And we want to keep them safe. We want them trained. And that is honorable. And I get it. But I don't necessarily know if we are allowed to do that by law. And the best thing that we can do is budget for some of these items. Um, now we deal with, and I spoke to this at a meeting, the, f you know, we want to keep our first responders safe, but there's three different firehouses that, that help, uh, keep Radnor safe. You have Brumel, you have Radnor or Wayne, 
and you have Bryn Mawr. So there's three different firehouses in three different townships and actually in three different counties. So if we buy something with some of the stormwater, an item, um, or even ongoing training, that's kind of a shared resource. So let's kind of communicate with the other either townships or counties or entities and figure out how we can kind of share some of the uh, some some of the costs. And I don't think that we should be rating the stormwater fee, um, the, the stormwater fee, because that that money is it's it's honorable to, to it's extremely honorable. We have to keep our first ref responders safe. Um, there's just uh, these are more budgeted items I would see uh, than. Um, just finding, hey, there's a lot of money here, let's pull it. It doesn't set a good precedent going forward with the residents. Hey, we want to issue a new fee, but our residents aren't going to be confident in paying for it. So again, it's a sensitive topic. We want to keep our first responders safe. We're looking, uh, we did contact them. Uh, they all gave a wish list, it's around $50,000. I believe we can handle that from the general budget. Um, so I think that, you know, not only do I think, I think we, we will, uh, but I don't think we should be raising, uh, or we should be rating the stormwater for that. Very good. Okay. Um, now let's go to seventh ward issues. Sure. Um, I items and stuff. Um, the first one, which has been sort of ongoing, I think since the late, eight, early, early 80s, is the uh, Villanova University lighting. Mm -hmm. um, the time limits they're supposed to be on, et cetera, et cetera, and I guess they've kind of expanded on that past what we have as a, an ordinance. Would you like to go through sure. some of that? Sure. So I had a lot of complaints. Um, people were emailing me that the, the lights in Villanova, the stadium lights, were staying on too late. Um, too late meaning after the 10.30, uh, the 10.30 uh, time where they're supposed to go off. So I did drive up there one day at 10.15. There were some kids using the field. And um, at a, they got off about 10.20, but the lights didn't go off till 10.30. So at 10.30, I called um, the police. They were cited. And now, for the past couple weeks, this is about a week or so ago, the lighting has been off at 10.30. Here's the problem. The problem is, back in 2012, uh, Villanova said, in, in a letter from Chris Kowalski, said that he was uh, upset that the lights were staying on past 9.15. And he said, if they are, it's only for a varsity sport, not for intramurals. I get it. If there's a football game, a championship f football game, you have a concert, fine, I get it. But these are now, um, but what Villanova has done is either last year, and uh, upon my investigation and contacting people in Radnor Township, they changed their policy from 915 and varsity to intramurals and 1030. And they did it kind of, you know, behind the back, behind, I believe, the residents' back. Villanova, um, I believe in September or, or earlier in the spring or summer, maybe, um, issued a Villanova Friends Facebook page. I think that this is a fairly important topic that you would say, hey, we're changing the policy, we're changing the time, uh, or we're implementing it now. So that kind of left a, a bad taste in my mouth because I think it was disrespectful for some of those neighbors that live uh, in that old oak section. Now those lights are beaming down at those houses and you have children that um, are young that need to go to sleep um, and it becomes a health issue. Uh, if you can't open your windows because um, you don't want the lights to come in, you don't want to hear the shade banging against um, the window, from the breeze, um, you know, and you have a higher uh, air conditioning bill um, or heating bill, depending on what time of year it is, um, that's, that's a, you know, a, a hidden cost to the neighbors as well. It's a quality of life issue, a, a little bit as a, as, and a safety issue as well. So all I'm asking is that Villanova acknowledges the problem. Um, and I guess they have, because like I said, the lighting has been better. but. When you have an email, and those emails are up on my uh, Facebook page, and you saw them at the meeting, I know. Mm -hmm. um, and when you make a statement and saying, um, hey, it's not going to happen again, I'm responsible for it, um, you know, and then 
a couple years later, hey, it doesn't, this policy doesn't suit us anymore. My question is, what's changed? What has changed? I mean, if it was so terrible back in 2012, why is it okay and acceptable today? Right, and I believe that it was, they were even come on, coming on early in the morning at 5.30 in the morning. Correct. When it was supposed to be from 7 to 9.15. Mm -hmm. So those- I, I think it's six o'clock. And they did turn on a little bit earlier. It was 5.45 on a mm -hmm. Sunday. And that's for a buddy walk. And I think it's great that Villanova wants to open up um, their stadium and their resources for a wonderful event like that. Um, but it just becomes an issue of scheduling. Um, you need to know these. Um, you know, you, if you want, you know, the township is expected uh, a certain level of service and we have rules that we have to apply. And I, I believe that these are the rules that they agreed upon and they still don't comply with them. And to me, again, to me and the neighbors, it's, it's concerning. I agree. Um, since I live very near Villanova and most yeah. of the time in the evening, you yeah. don't have to use a flashlight because it's bright as day. Um, okay, let us look, uh, one of the problems that I see as, a, as um, something that we really need to address is the sidewalk that runs down La uh, Lancaster Avenue between Barley Cone and County Line. It's, um, as you well know, and most everybody that lives in the neighborhood knows, it is overgrown, it is too small, Mm -hmm. uh, the road has come up to meet the curb, and with all the new students coming in in uh, 2019, um, there is a real safety issue going on. Absolutely. Um, there is definitely a grading issue there. Um, the road is, the, the sidewalk is too narrow. The road is too narrow. Uh, that road was probably made for horse and buggies back a long time ago. Then they made it a four-lane highway. And what has happened since then, we have tractor trailers that go down there. We have, instead of, you know, little old Volks, Vol Volkswagen Beetles, now we have these huge Hummers and Suburbans, and they spill over into two sides of the road. So what's, two lanes of the highway, pardon. So what's going to happen is, you know, if you have to kind of move over, you're pretty much maxing out your area uh, of the lane. And if you have to... Uh, move over a little bit, you could definitely swipe the curb or sideswipe a car. And the problem is, you're right, the grading is terrible there. Um, when there's this much deviation between the sidewalk, and sometimes there's less than that. Less than that. Yeah, between the sidewalk and the street, you could hurt uh, and injure a, a student who, who, or I mean, not a student, although, like you said, there are going to be 1,100 new students, but anyone pedestrian that's walking on that sidewalk. So I've spoken um, at the again at the last meeting um, we asked the manager to look into ways how to assess the situation try to find the solutions and see what it would cost so hopefully we can get some answers at the next meeting mm -hmm. and I believe the best thing uh, that we could do is probably hopefully try to get a grant so we won't be on the hook for all of it but it definitely is a safety issue so that issue is a safety issue we have other safety issues in the ward and we have, as you know, a ton of uh, children in Garrett Hill, Conestoga Village, Old Oaks, and you have people speeding up and down uh, all these little side streets. And now with the CICD, the new Penn Medicine, um, everything now, all these little like Lowry's Lane and Ithin, uh, they're all becoming what were once neighborhood streets are now becoming cross streets. Mm -hmm. So there's no great answer explanation um, there that people want to hear it's just that that's we're having more construction and more people more people in the the area and you have to be extremely extremely safe that's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to um, there's another little area from the north end of Lowry's Lane from Lancaster to County Line north the north area um, now people fly through, they turn on County Line to hit that light on Lowry's, it's maybe 500, maybe not even 200 feet, mm -hmm. and they gun it to get through that light. And you have children, again, a lot of children on that little stretch of Lowry's Lane. So the neighbors have asked if we could put a stop, make that a three-way stop sign. Now that's a little bit tricky because we have to work with Laura Marion on that because it's County Line Road. And if you go about 70 feet um, 
eastbound there on County Line, there's another stop sign there as well. So I don't know about the rules, but these are the things that we're trying to do to help make it more safe for, for our neighbors and, and their children. Right. That's great because I do know that a while back they tried for a grant. I think we should try again. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we should try to work with the state of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to help us out here. I mm -hmm. think both both the township and the, and mm -hmm. the state are responsible. Um, one of our near and dear topics is Emlyn Tennell Field. Uh, I know for years when my daughters played softball, and they are now n not children anymore, um, there was no comfort station whatsoever. So, and they weren't little boys, so it was a little hard to find a place for <laughs> no them trees. to relieve. No, no trees, yeah. no bushes, but anyway. Um, <laughs> And I know that uh, for a while there, there was, that was a big controversy. Can you let the, everyone know sure. what's happened? So um, that actually, I think, worked as, about as well as, as could happen. We had, um, as, as you know, and I, I believe you were there, we had a big neighborhood gathering from a lot of different stakeholders, the township folks, uh, neighbors. And what we were able to work with the neighbors after this meeting was we were able to take the, the building the, the neighbors wanted it moved, and we moved it. They wanted the size shrunk, we shrunk it. They wanted um, different items you know, that were allowed. They wanted to limit the types of food that could be sold from there. We've done that as well. And we're still, I don't think we're gonna lose any parking spots, and we're gonna keep the mulch pile. We may have to move the mulch pile. So I think it hit, uh, I think it's a great compromise. I think the neighbors got what they want, and when I say Little League got what Little League wanted, they got that too. And you have to realize that Little League represents about seven, eight hundred children within the township. So it's, it's important that everyone was able to come together. And I believe that this is a great compromise um, when it came to hitting, uh, you know, making the neighbors happy as well as making the other people that live in the neighborhood happy as well. So number two is, and I'm hoping that we can have a groundbreaking in, I'm hoping that it can be in late spring. If it's not in late spring, let's have it like at the 4th of July parade. So when we're done at the park for when I'm in the dunk tank again, probably. Okay. Hopefully right. not, we'll see. <laughs> we, can all, we all can go over to Emlyn Tunnel and have a groundbreaking there. It should be done by late spring if we can start doing it, you know, sooner than later and we have a, um, a winter that can work, you know, that's a favorable winter. Right. Because so. I know we have the money already set aside yes, for this. that has so been your mark. That's already been done, mm -hmm. so we're, we should be able to get going. That, that's probably the best news for a lot of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, I know that there has been some rezoning um, asked for in the neighborhood. Uh, on Lancaster Avenue, there's mm -hmm. a small ha a home that is now an office building uh, mm -hmm. that was requested to change from office to retail. Yes. Could you give us a... So that. that was for Alara. They wanted a um, that to be rezoned for a medical marijuana, a small area, about 450, excuse me, uh, square feet mm -hmm. for retail, and the rest was going to be office. And they only wanted 425 square feet for retail. I am all for uh, medicinal marijuana. I'm for any drug that can help someone that has a, a, a life, you know, a life-threatening illness or to help someone's quality of life. So it's not an issue, it was never an issue with me with, with marijuana, THC or, or whatever. For me, it's an issue of that is office space. That is the one area on Lancaster Avenue that is not commercial or institutional, we'll say. Um, you have Villanova, the stadium, but um, there's no retail space. And the problem with that is once you allow 450 square feet, they may come back, they may not, they may come back a couple of years later and say, hey, the industry has changed. I know we said 400, we need the whole bottom floor. Okay, well, you know, as, as um, industries grow and this whole, uh, you know, medicinal marijuana is in its infancy, they may stay in, they may move out, as these, infant, as these uh, industries grow, uh, and let's say they do m move out, now you have this vacant building with now instead of 425 square feet of uh, commercial space, 1,000 square feet. That's a big enough footprint to, I don't know, I'm just put any kind of, uh, I don't want to say fast food restaurant or convenience store. So instead of the foot traffic being, say, two, 300 people a day, now you're looking at two or 3,000 people a day. 
And we have, um, there are other issues like that in downtown Wayne where um, there could be a Wawa that could greatly increase the traffic in a certain block. And I just don't really want to see that in Garrett Hill. I don't think the, the neighborhood, it's not, it, it doesn't have the, the capacity for that. And it's an issue of quality of life and it's an issue of protecting our residents. So, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's just, it comes down to what I, what I, what I feel um, we, what I feel is a, uh, a certain quality, it's a quality of life that, and you can look at, and most of the neighbors agreed. Uh, I had one or two that were against it. I probably had about eight to 10 emails uh, that were against it. I had a bunch of phone calls as well. And they just don't want retail there. There's plenty of retail space in, in our bustling downtown Garrett Hill section. Mm -hmm. And there's two or three vacancies there. Uh, so if you need to put it, and there are a lot of pizza shops there, as uh, my colleague Jack Larkin says. So medicinal marijuana will probably go great next to a pizza shop. <laughs> yes, yes, that probably would be good. <laughs> Now I'd like to sure. go to some topics that okay. are kind of fun. Okay, They're great. very fun, fun, okay. fun. Um, I know you have in the back of your mind, you'd like to have some something that would be really good for our our appearance and all that stuff. So what was, what, you have a pet drive that you want to put together. A coat drive. Coat drive. A coat drive. So this is um, what I think would be great to do. Uh, we have a lot of families that live in Conestoga, uh, Conestoga Village, Garrett Hill, yeah. Old Oaks and throughout, obviously throughout the township. I have a, not a dream, because it's probably easier to get than I think, but finding someone that had a brand new refrigerator delivered to them or a washer dryer and have those big boxes. Mm -hmm. And to take one of those boxes and to put it by the church on Conestoga Road and just to fill it up with um, uh, you know, kids clothes, or not kids clothes, but kids jackets and adult jackets. And we'll find a great charity, a deserving charity, and we can drop them off. I just think um, it's something easy. It, doesn't have to be pretty. I don't need the, the box spray painted. People will figure it out. And if we can come up with uh, some jackets and some items that can help some less fortunate families, I think that would be, uh, I think that's a, a nice thing that, that we can do. Um, I saw a tremendous amount of love and support. We had a terrible house fire mm -hmm. in, in yeah, Garrett Hill. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that the community came out and raised an enormous amount of funds for this gentleman. I put up on um, GoFundMe, I'm like $2,500. And mm -hmm. I figured if we got 500, that would be enough because he lost his glasses. And when you get, uh, you know, when you get your new glasses, it's between the, you know, the glasses, the frames may be $99, but, but mm -hmm. between the, uh, the appointment and the, the lenses and all that, it was a four or $500 bill. I know his cable box, which got burned up. He's responsible for that as well. That's two or three hundred. So, you know, even that five hundred dollars would just kind of help for that. We raised over five thousand, maybe even close to six thousand dollars for the guy. So I know that um, this is something that the community can do. I'm not asking anyone to go in their pockets, but if you have an old coat that you think um, could be donated, that's just taking up room in your closet. And we all know that uh, um, some of the houses. I know that. Uh, some of the houses, we need the space, uh, and we can, uh, you know, remove some of that clutter and the stuff that we don't use. And if it can go to a, a, a needy family or a worthwhile, worthwhile cause, I think that'd be a great thing. I think this is terrific, and and it is indicative of the Seventh Ward. We are a neighborhood, and mm -hmm. we are, you know, if someone needs has a new baby, we yep. get them their food yep. every for the first like month. I think I had mine for a month. Um, you know, or if someone loses a parent or, mm -hmm. or something, they all gather around and we chip in, which is terrific. Um, one of the last topics, I guess, that we'll talk about is our wonderful Christmas tree lighting. Sure. And I think you started that whole idea, did you not? No, no? I, 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 I can't take the credit oh, for it. Oh, okay. Um, but thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I thought it was you, but that no, was No, no, no. I think so. That was done um, a, a couple, maybe last year. Now, I know that, uh, and I will um, give her a a little bit of shout out right here. Rita from All Seasons oh. donates these big trees. Uh, and um, so that is a, and she helped sponsor the event. Um, I know that, I believe that Keith Martin helped do some of the electrical work. And so I believe most of the electrical infrastructure 
is there now, but that's definitely the community um, helping out. Yeah. So this year, um, and pardon me, last year I know that uh, Tammy Cohen, I think she was kind of like the MC, mm -hmm. and she enjoyed it, but she wanted more of a local, um, uh, more of like a local flavor to it. So she asked me to kind of brainstorm some ideas of who could host it. And I believe we came up with uh, Manuel Reverend Howard, who also goes by the AKA uh, Reverend Bumper. Yes. <laughs> uh, and we've asked him to do it, and I believe he's going to do it. He's Absolutely. a Garrett Hill uh, native himself. Absolutely. Has a lot of ties in the community. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a fun event. Um, in the past, Rita from All Seasons has had some hot chocolate okay. uh, afterwards. Yay. So it's just a, a nice, fun event. We've, we can showcase. Uh, Clemma Crown Park, because I think it is with the new um, swing sets and the new playground. I believe it's the nicest park in all of Radnor, period. So that is, uh, it's just something fun and exciting, uh, and that's November 25th. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what time, but, uh, but obviously sometime after. Uh, you will post it there. or put it on Radnor's uh, absolutely. official site and your site, yeah, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. everyone knows yep. that they can come. Yep. And are we going to sing? We can do some Christmas. Uh, well, no, I think there are Christmas carols last year, so yes. that's great. Yeah, Very good. Very so we can good. do Christmas carols and great. hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. And Hopefully, the weather will not will uh, oblige us. That would be great. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if there's a rain date, so huh. but okay. let's uh, or you snow. Know. <laughs> but anyway, no, just kidding. Anyway, well, thank you, Sean. This was been this has been great. We mm -hmm. we have to do this on a regular basis so we that we keep everyone up to date. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody who watches. Um, we will be back. That's a threat and a promise. And one more thing, if I can oh. just add. My mother, I told my mom that you were interviewing me, and my mom says to say hi to you. Oh, very good. Okay. Thanks so, so much. That's it. Tell her hi, too. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank Thanks, you. Now.